Look, I'm a gamer. And we like playing games with our dad. This is sort of ditto with a couple of kids. This game is a procedurally generated Zelda-like game. The art is really cute. Yeah, but Mom was really creepy at the start. Okay, here are five questions to help you decide if you should play sort of ditto with your kids. What are you trying to do in the game? You're trying to upgrade your sword and toys to fight monsters. Yeah, and you're trying to help the village by defeating Marmo. Every 100 years, a new kid in town gets to pick up the sword of Ditto to lift the evil curse. You'll also find and unlock a good variety of other toys, and all this equipment can be upgraded. Like, the sword can be improved by finding four items for the blacksmith, and your other toys can be upgraded with batteries and elemental attacks like fire, ether, and poison. Alright, what makes this game awesome? I like how every time you defeat Mormo, you get to pick a character. And you get to have stickers that do cool things. Unlocking badges allows you to play with a new character on your next run. Each character starts out with unique set of stickers and stats. And playing that character will level up their badge, making them stronger. And you get a ton of stickers that let you roll farther, eat food instead of dying, give you more health and armor, and even give you toy power and health regen. I like that you get to pick a lot of characters. You can summon Zon and the caves are super cool. Okay, so what things do you need my help with? When I'm fighting a high, high level boss and how to unlock some doors and puzzles. Defeating Mormo because it's really hard. I try not to die, but then I sometimes die. Yeah, luckily the game supports two-player local co-op. This was cool because my kids could come into my world and drop out when things get too tough and I could join them in their world and help them out with their run. Now, what do you wish the game did better? I wish I could give you desserts that are rare. Like maybe you could eat ice cream or banana split. Did did you try the Mormo corn, ethered apples, or ether puss sticks? Gross. I wish the game had more characters and challenges. Like, maybe Mormo could make us weak for a day. Ooh, every time you face Mormo, win or lose, the world will restart and reassemble, and Mormo will drop a curse on you to begin your next run. This could be anything from giving you a time limit before the big fight, an ether storm which makes the environment more hazardous, and even being chased by a nemesis who makes general progression more perilous. So, would you recommend this game for families? Yes, because if you really, really like a game with action, you like this game. Yes, because it is very cute, and I like the style of the game. In the end, I had a fun time playing this game. I enjoyed getting a random assortment of toys each run, and solving the procedural dungeons, which also randomized certain buffs and debuffs. I also really liked the art style, which made me feel like I was playing in a cool stylized painting. The basic idea of the game goes like this. Wake up and listen to Puku, your guide. You are the chosen one, blah, blah. Black. Collect your gear and start exploring. Your map will generate a new every 100 years, so look for these black thresholds and try to explore everywhere. If a cave is marked as red, that means you have yet to visit it. Sometimes you will find toy dungeons, which give you a random toy. Right, and there are other important places like anchor dungeons. Defeat them and Mormo will be weaker for your final battle. You have to explore as much as you can before you reach Mormo's level. She always starts off several levels above you and becomes more and more worried as you gain XP and level up. Once you reach her level, you will have 24 hours to prepare for the final battle. But a day in the game is only 8 minutes in real life. Right, time moves quickly, but you can freeze the timer by going indoors. Like in a shop, a cave, a house, or even town. Also, there are these crowned enemies. Each map segment will have one. Each time you hit it, it will drop extra loot. Eventually, I unlocked a fast attack nerf gun, and this was great for popping items out of them like a piñata. And this is important, since some areas of the map drop specific currency, like bottle caps or shiny things, and these can be used to buy even more unique items. And there are a lot of other places and secrets to find, like... These cracks in the wall can be opened up with an explosion! Yeah, and there's a beach where you find boxes with cool things inside. Visit the Stonehenge and sacrifice an item for a new reward. We found out that sacrificing five of these icons will give you a secret ending. There's also five colored orbs. If you find all five, bring them to the waterfall for something special. And if you find the lost penguins, pick them up. The boss penguin will give you more space for bombs. There's actually a good bit of content and secrets in this game. You might have to look up some things online, but hopefully this video helped a bit. Oh, I almost forgot. You collect these crystal shards, which you can use to buy things like extra lives or extra time to level up and explore. But be careful. After you fight Mormo, Serendipity will ask for crystal shards to hold items for you to give to the next sword a hundred years from now. Each subsequent run will get much easier if you plan ahead and save up enough shards. Tell us your favorite character in the comments. Mine is the mouse. Mine is the kitty because she looks like our cat. Zombie apocalypse is here!